even if you're short on time, you can still grow muscle. Here's how. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf with you today with Strong by Science, and we're breaking down how to make your training more time efficient so that you can still grow muscle even if you only have an hour or two of training time per week. That could be two half an hour sessions, a couple of one hour sessions, or even just four 30 minute sessions. No matter, if you're constrained on time, here's what to do. First up, a couple of considerations. One, if you are limited on time and only have an hour or two to train a week, there's a good chance you won't be maximizing your possible progress. However, you can still make really robust gains. And secondly, if you're constrained on time, that means that fatigue and recovery overall become much less of a bottleneck to how you should train and how much you can train. Ultimately, you'll just be limited more so by how much time you can spend in the gym, in your home gym, or what have you, training, than by how much you can recover between sessions. And so we'll be shifting our emphasis in terms of training strategies from whatever is most effective in terms of minimizing fatigue and how much growth we get, more so to maximizing how much growth we can get in a limited amount of time. Without further ado, here's tip number one. With even as few as around five sets a week per muscle, you can still see muscle growth. For instance, a meta-analysis from 2017 by Schoenfeld and colleagues found that even doing one to five sets led to some muscle growth. Importantly, this meta-analysis did include both untrained and trained participants. So to be on the safe side, if you've been training for a while, doing at least five sets per week per muscle is a good ballpark to aim for. To add on to that, a meta-analysis by Basval and colleagues still found appreciable hypertrophy, even when doing lower volumes of below 12 sets per week per muscle. And keep in mind, volume is counted both directly and indirectly. So a set of bench press would count towards both the chest, the triceps, and the front delts. And so reaching say between 5 to 12 sets per week per muscle is really not that difficult. My second tip, if you don't have much time to train, is to train to failure or potentially even beyond failure. A meta-regression by Robinson and colleagues found that as a set was taken closer and closer to failure, all the way to true failure, we see more hypertrophy occurring. And so if you're only in the gym for say an hour or two a week, you can likely afford to take each one of those sets to true failure and make that set count. While there is going to be more fatigue from going closer to failure, if you're only training an hour or two a week, you probably don't need to worry about this. And importantly, there is very preliminary evidence of going past failure potentially being beneficial for hypertrophy. First, we had evidence by Coleman and colleagues that doing drop sets is similarly effective at inducing hypertrophy than doing traditional straight sets. In a drop set, when you reach failure, Failure, you're dropping the load as a means to train past failure conceptually. And so at the very least, it seems to be reasonably effective. And secondly, the first study on training past failure that I'm aware of, I was just involved in. This hasn't been published yet, so take it with a grain of salt, but here's what we found. We compared just doing full reps on the calf raise to doing full reps and then extending the set past failure, doing partial reps when you could no longer get a full range of motion rep and you had reached quote unquote failure and using a within participant design where one leg was being trained with just a full range of motion ending the set at full range of motion failure versus the other leg being trained as it is described the leg that trained past failure saw 50% more hypertrophy of the gastrocnemius. So there is some preliminary evidence that going past failure might be worth a try if you're aiming to maximize your time in the gym. Tip number three is to use multi-joint or compound movements as the big foundation of your training. At least one meta-analysis on single versus multi-joint training has found similar hypertrophy from the two. And so since multi-joint exercises train multiple muscle groups at once, most of your training, if you're pressed for time, should be multi-joint movements that train a lot of muscles at once. For example, if you opt to train with a full body approach a couple of times a week, including a hip hinge, a squat pattern, some sort of pressing exercise, and some sort of pulling exercise within your workout is going to take you a long way towards growing your whole body. My fourth tip is to use a minimalist warm-up routine. Ultimately, only relatively hard sets close to failure really grow the most muscle possible. And so if you're spending 20 minutes of a one hour session just warming up, there's a good chance you could be growing more muscle by cutting down on your warm-up time. Keep your warm-up quite specific and minimize the amount of warming up done per exercise to just zero to three sets of the actual exercise. Exercise. Unless you've been prescribed some sort of static stretching by a physiotherapist for an ongoing injury, generally I would also avoid static stretching. A quick dynamic warm up like doing the movement itself for a few sets or just doing some arm swings or what have you is going to be the most time efficient approach as it will accomplish most of the goals of a good warm up without taking too much time. Tip number five is to consider special techniques like antagonizing
antagonistic paired supersets, myreps, or drop sets. Specifically, we have a few acute studies looking at the idea of supersetting two antagonistic movements, like a bench press in a row, or a tricep pushdown and a curl, generally finding that supersetting these two exercises with no muscular overlap in terms of what's being trained doesn't impair performance. And so you can effectively get twice the amount of work in in the same amount of time. Importantly, this general concept can work with any two movements that don't tire you out too much overall, something like a squat wouldn't be ideal, and that don't really have any major muscular overlap. For example, while a dumbbell side raise and a calf raise aren't antagonistic movement patterns, they are sufficiently distinct that you can probably superset them to good effect. Similarly, when it comes to drop sets, we have a meta-analysis by Coleman and colleagues finding similar hypertrophy from a drop set approach traditional set approaches, but cutting down on training time by about 50 to 70%. Tip number six is to consider your use of exercises carefully. Certain exercises are more time efficient than others. Specifically, dumbbell exercises and stack loaded machines are generally more time efficient than barbell based exercises or plate loaded machines. And oftentimes these exercises will have less setup required. Always consider setup of the exercise as a factor contributing to how long it takes to perform it. And finally, prioritize bilateral movements over unilateral movements. This is a minor factor, but for most people, doing movements that train both sides of your body at the same time will save a little bit of time. Tip number seven, based on my experience, try to manage fatigue throughout the session. A good way to do this, in my experience, is to intersperse exercises that are quite fatiguing overall that get you out of breath, like squats, with less fatiguing exercises like isolation movements. If you do a squat and then a deadlift and then an RDL and then a leg press back to back, you might find you need to rest for a little bit longer between sets because you have so much fatigue built up from previous exercises. Whereas if you spread these fatiguing exercises out a little bit more, I found it can cut down session duration. Tip number eight. Minimize rest times. Specifically for hypertrophy, you probably want rest times of about one to two minutes. A pre-printed meta-analysis that I was recently involved on found that while resting for less than one minute between sets did reduce hypertrophy, the best muscle growth was actually seen with one to two minutes of rest between sets. So as a general heuristic, resting for one to two minutes between sets is a good approach. We're on the higher end of that range if you're training a lower body with more compound movements and for higher reps, and the lower end of that range if you're training your upper body with lower reps and with more single joint movements. You can still see great gains even with resting for less than one minute, but you may need to do more additional sets to make up for the loss in stimulus. Tip number nine, opting for low repetition sets of say five to eight reps will generally one, take less long to perform on a per set basis, you're just doing fewer reps, and two, cause less fatigue to recover from between sets. Most people can do a set of five on squats and be ready to go again within a few minutes, whereas doing a set of 20 on squats, for example, will take you longer to recover from. However, this is a bit of a double-edged sword, as working up to this heavier weight that is needed to make a set of five effective will take longer than working up to a weight that you can use for 20 reps. So play around and find whether one approach works better for you. Tip number 10, right before you leave the gym, do another set. For example, what I do when I'm really busy is to get all of my stuff ready to leave the gym as I'm resting during my last few sets. And then right before I need to leave the gym because I need to be somewhere at work or what have you in the studio recording a video for you, I do my last set. And this doesn't seem like much, but doing one last set before you leave the gym done over and over again can be beneficial. And in fact, you can take this up another notch by doing something quite tiresome, but also stimulating at the very end of your session when fatigue isn't really a concern anymore, since you won't be training again for another 24, 48, 72 hours. So for example, doing a drop set right as you're about to leave the gym, having all your stuff ready can allow you to cram in a bit more stimulus into your already constrained time. And that wraps it up. Psych, that is what you thought. But at Trial by Science, we're committed to providing you with even more value for your buck. In fact, for just $3,000 instead of $350,000 as per usual, you can get a bonus tip right about now. On a serious note, bonus tip. Especially in busy gyms, be flexible about exercise order. If you're training at rush hour around 5 p.m., for example, you might find that the equipment needed to do your first exercise isn't always available immediately. And if you only have half an hour or an hour to train and you spend 15 minutes waiting for that fast exercise, there's a good chance you're not gonna be able to complete your session within your allotted time. And for hypertrophy specifically, exercise order doesn't really seem to matter all that much. A meta-analysis by Nunes and colleagues found no effect of exercise order on hypertrophy. And so if you need to do some machine chest press first before squatting, even though you wanted to start with squats, it is not the end of the world and it may allow you to get more work into your sessions when the gym is busy. That is the video absolute masterclass on how to train when you're busy and still make gains. I've been using these tips myself within the gym and it's been super helpful. If you enjoyed this 
video, please comment, like, subscribe. Let us know what other topics you want to see us cover from a scientific perspective. If you'd like more information like this, consider checking out the newsletter below and getting some free programs as part of that deal. Conversely, if you'd like an expert to coach you, consider checking out strongbyscience.com slash coaching for someone to handle your training, your nutrition, or even just to have a consultation with. Make sure you hit the bell below so you get notified whenever we release a new video. And finally, have a fantastic day from the whole team at Strong Science. Peace.